What's going on guys? Today we're going to be talking about the prototype design pattern. So without further ado, intro. So guys, I just wanted to let you know at the end of the video, I will be giving pros and cons on why, I mean pros and cons about the uh, prototype design pattern and also where would you possibly use this. Um, but that's at the end of the video. Um, right now, I am going to be talking about the design pattern and the concept, the concept of it. So the concept of the prototype design pattern is to copy an existing object rather than creating a new instance from scratch. Now, this approach actually probably might <laughs> save you resources and time, especially when the object creation is a heavy process. Heavy process meaning that if the object is very, very complex. Now, if you actually worked with code outside of your own personal projects and like for an actual company, um, you know that these objects can get very complex or are very complex and it'll take too much time to actually copy those one by one. Like we did over here, like we just grabbed this, uh, we created a new instance of shopper and then we just added these same things to this these four same things to every instance that we created. Now this is going to take time, obviously, if the object is complex, that's why you want to clone it. But let's look at the example for right now. So we do have some redundancy where we have camping knife, tent, backpack and map. So me and Mike are going camping and it's kind of you probably, uh, we do, we both need a camping knife, tent, backpack and map just in case one gets lost. Well, at least they have their own map, their own backpack, their own tent and camping knife. But it would be better if we didn't have to actually go out and start grabbing this stuff. You know, it would be better if someone already had those things for us. So that way we just grab them and then just add our own items. You know, we just bring our own items and just go to this person and say, hey, we need these things and just pay him instead of going out and doing the shopping all, all of ourselves. So that's what we're going to be doing right now. We're actually going to create a new file called, well, scout underscore prototype dot JS. And here we're actually going to give this scout. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to call this scout. We're not going to give it a name. We're going to give this scout the I'm going to say the uh, redundant kind of things that everybody needs. So now this scout is always going to have the camping knife, tent, backpack, and map. So we will just ask the scout, hey, we need these things. Just give it to us so that way we don't have to keep on uh, looking for these things. So we got this scout right here back in index. Well, obviously, we don't need this. And we're not creating a new instance of shopper since scout already does that for us. What we're going to be doing is using scout. So I'm going to just do... I'm going to require scout, scout underscore prototype. I hope, I hope I spelled that right. And we're not going to be creating a new shopper. We're actually just going to be cloning this scout. So scout dot clone. And this needs a name. WDJ does need a name. So dot name is going to equal web dev journey and we're going to do the same thing for Mike. Uh, we need to get rid of these things, redundant kind of stuff. Just give him the scout or he's going to ask scout to give him the, um, the things that he needs. So Mike dot name is going to equal Mike long John silver. Shows like that. All right. So the only thing I'm bringing is a slingshot and the only thing he's bringing is a reading light and the scout is going to provide us with the redundant stuff. It's not really redundant, but the actual necessary things that we need. So before we actually run this, we do need to create our clone method. Uh, we don't have it. And before we do that, I think I forgot. Yeah, I forgot to export our scout. So module dot export equals scout. All right. 
now inside of shopper we're gonna be creating our clone method clone and this part is going to confuse a lot of people this is where people actually get confused so this first bit I'm actually trying to write I'm gonna write it out and explain somewhat what I'm trying to do and then once I write it all out I'm going to explain it so right now we're gonna be copying this structure this shopper structure of the current instance that we're, we're getting it from so, so the current instance is the scout instance and we're copying the structure that the scout has which is this so we're gonna call we're gonna create a variable called proto equals object dot get proto to type of this so this line actually grabs the uh, current objects I mean the current instance structure now we're going to be creating an object with this structure placed inside of it so uh, var clone is going to equal object dot create we're going to be creating an object and we're going to be sticking this proto the structure of the object or the structure the structure we're going to just give this to the clone now now we are going to do, now we do need to get the um, the current values of this so cloned and we're going to just give it to cloned so cloned dot underscore name is going to equal this dot underscore name and we do need to do it for shopping list as well so down here cloned dot underscore shopping list is going to equal an array oops an array I'm going to use the spread operator and then this dot shop underscore shopping list okay let me explain what's going on right here so let me actually make this bigger so I can explain it better and I'm actually going to split this to the right <clears throat> alright and this is a scout prototype so over here we have an instance of this shopper class okay we have an instance of the shopper class now in index.js we're using it we're cloning it okay meaning that we don't want to be creating new instances obviously for the same things so this is why we clone it but this scout already has a class stuck to it it already has is using it the scout is using a class which is over here when we clone it we want to be using the same class this scout has and just append it or add it to WD, WDJ okay so this is what we're doing right here proto is grabbing the structure the class and just we're just right now we're just grabbing the class right here we're just grabbing the class so this one you could instead of saying proto you could literally just say um <clears throat> shopper class copy we could literally just say it like that because this right here is literally copying the shopper class okay and down here I'm gonna just say uh, instance instead of clone so that way we can have a better representation so this instance is we're gonna be creating an instance of this shopper class copy okay and now we're just down here uh, is pretty self-explanatory but up here is where we're confusing people I'm pretty sure I'm losing people over here so over here we just want to be grabbing the scouts class whatever the scout class is using or whatever class the scout is using that's what we want to add to WDJ which is this right here we want to grab the scouts class okay which is this and now we want to append it to WDJ this is the instance WDJ is the instance okay we want to append it that class to the instance so that way we have all of these methods added to WDJ and now we're down here we're just adding the name and shopping list I hope this actually explains a little bit more on why or how this is actually working but enough of that guys we're gonna move on to the pros and cons of this actual pattern and where would you actually use it um, I'm just I'm just thinking that I did not run it so let's run this thing so that way you can see what's going on and we get a thing let me fix that real quick oh that's because right here in clone we're not returning the instance uh, we need to return it 
instance. Okay. And now if you run it one more time, you should get it. All right. See, uh, web dev has camping, camping knife, tent, backpack map. So does, uh, Mike Long and John Silver. And the only difference is web dev has slingshot while Mike has a reading light. Crazy Mike reading light. Don't know why. But anyways, let's go to the pros and cons and why. So guys, I do want you to know that the main advantage of this pattern is to have minimal instance creation, um, which might be more costly than actually cloning the instance instead. But let's go on. Let's go on to uh, pros and cons. The one of the pros is adding and remo removing products at runtime. At prototypes that you incorporate a new concrete product class into a system simply by registering a prototypical instance with the client. Now, this is a bit more flexible than other creational patterns because a client can install and remove prototypes at runtime. And by I mean by other creational patterns is one of them, uh, for example, is the factory method, uh, which is going to be in the next video, guys. So, you know, stay tuned for that. Another pro is you can produce complex objects more conveniently, um, like we saw right now, even though mine wasn't that complex, but just imagine that you, you, you're dealing with a complex object. Another one is reduce the time complexity of creating complex objects. Now this ties into the second one that I just said. Um, yeah, so if it's a complex object, yes, you're gonna have a hard time replicating that instance. Um, and as for the second one, you, you're not going to waste that many resources of your company, your resource and time from your company. So that's a good thing. Um, we can use this pattern to configure the application with classes dynamically. That's pretty self-explanatory and reduced subclassing, which the factory method, like I said, in the next video, don't worry. The factory method often produces a hierarchy of creator classes that parallels the product class hierarchy. All right. The prototype pattern lets you clone a prototype instead of asking a factory method to make a new object. Hence, you don't need a creator class hierarchy at all. So moving on to the cons overkill for, a pro okay. This first one isn't really a, um, a con. I would say it's just more of a, I guess, letting you know it's an overkill for a project that uses very few objects and or does not have an underlying emphasis of the extension of prototype chains. It also hides concrete product classes from the client and each subclass of prototype must implement the clone operation, which may be difficult when the classes under consideration already exist. Also implementing clone, can be difficult when their internals include objects that don't support copying or have circular references. I forgot to put references, but yeah, circular references. Um, when should you use these? Well, honestly, the gang of four actually tell us when, or according to the gang of four, this is when you should use them. All right. When a system should be independent of how its products are created, composed and represented. When the class is to instantiate are specified at runtime, for example, by dynamic loading to avoid building a class hierarchy of factories that parallels the class hierarchy of products, the factory method. Um, when instances of a class can have one of only a few different combinations of state, like the one we did right now, where it only had, uh, literally one, we just added one thing to it. That's it. Um, it may be more convenient to install a corresponding number of prototypes and clone them rather than instantiating the class manually each time we with the appropriate state. Now, in my opinion, these are what the gang of four um, tell us that we probably should use a pro prototype with. But in my opinion, most common cases where creating a stateful instance is way more expensive than copying an, an existing instance. And you need to create lots of this object. Like for example, if the creation needs to get data from a database connection, get data from the system with system calls or the file system, get data from another server with sockets, web services, or whatever, um, compute a large amount of data. For example, if it needs to sort data, basically anything that takes time. All right. 
the object must be stateful because if it has no state, then you should probably be using a singleton in my previous video. You should probably probably be using a single a singleton for that. Now, there is another use case. If you have an instance that is mutable and you want to give it to another part of the code for security reasons, you might want to give a duplicate instead of the real instance because the instance can be modified by the client code and have an impact on other parts of the code that use it. Now, these are my opinions, guys. Um, but clearly, the Gang of Four has uh, written here whatever the Gang of Four is law, so abide by them. Now, nah, but for real, this is very uh, this is a um, a topic where no one can really be right or wrong about it. All right, I mean, yo yo yo, I'm pretty sure you'll end up arguing. A lot about when to use these things and this is just my opinions you guys and you know we're I just want you to leave a comment down below where would you use the prototype pattern um, and I misspelled prototype I'm just realizing right now but I'm too lazy to change it so so I'm gonna say prototype pattern um, but leave a comment down below where would you use it and if you haven't subscribed consider subscribing and like this video if you learn something or dislike it if you have something like if i did something wrong or said something wrong so thank you guys so much for watching this video and the next video is going to be obviously about the factory um so stay tuned for that guys and i will see you in the next video thanks